Hi there. I'm so glad you're joining me today. This is Shauna from The Foil Fox and I'm going to show you two ways to use the Mini Anemone Stamp and Die Set by Paper Tray Ink and Ink to Paper Collection. And so here I'll get you acquainted with the stamp set. It comes in this wonderful hold and fold um, container that you can use for storage. They're fabulous. And then um, here are the two stamp sets and there are several stamps for the flowers and the leaves and then two great sentiments. There is also a coordinating die set. This one I kind of cut apart already and I put it on a magnetic panel for better organization so I don't lose those pieces. And then I'm going to use one of my very, very favorite um, die sets, which is the notched die set. And I'm going to use that largest die. So let's get started with a piece of 110 pound Nina cardstock and some true black uh, ink by uh, paper tray ink and I have just the outline stamp I'm using that's all I'll be using for this one for the flowers and I'm going to stamp two of each but um, I don't think I'm going to use all of them I think I'm going to save a few of them for um, another project but I'll stamp these so that I know that I have them and make sure that I get good impressions of them. And you know, anemones have really great black centers to them and this ink really makes a beautiful black center. With those done, then I'm going to cut them out with the matching dies and I'm also gonna cut out the leaves using some green cardstock and um, cut out all the different leaves. And I now I've decided I'm gonna only use four of the flowers. So I'm going to just take R01 which is a Copic marker, and I'm just gonna flick on some color. I want these to be fairly pastel. So I'm gonna start out with R01, which is a fairly light color, and then I'll deepen it with R20. And I'll do that with all of these flowers, um, just like that one, I'll, uh, I'll color all of them exactly uh, the same way. I wanna make sure that I'm leaving a lot of white space because I want to get these and I and I'm going to keep these fairly pastel. With those done, I'm going to take the um, stamps for these leaves. Now there are some stamps that are for the leaves that cover most of the leaf, or you can just use the veining ones. And that's all I'm using for this. So it's a very, a very simple stamp. There is one for each shape of um, leaf. And I'm using new leaf ink by um, paper tray. So I'm stamping all of these different colors. I'm sorry, not colors, but leaves. <laughs> and once those are done, I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna work on the base of this. So I have a white card base, and then I have a piece of paper from the Biddy Big paper. It's True Black Biddy Big. They have all these wonderful papers that match their inks. And I chose the big polka dot, as you saw on the reverse side, is the small polka dot, but I'm gonna use the, the big polka dot, I think, um, on the front of this. I'm gonna go bold today. And so then with that on there, I'm going to take the notched uh, die and I cut out a black cardstock and a white cardstock. And I'm going to take the black one and I'm going to trim it back right on that edge that the die creates a kind of an embossed edge all the way around. And I'm cutting all that off just, um, just right there on that edge. And that allows it to be inset from the white uh, panel. And once I get to those corners, I'm just going to use a uh, little scissor and trim all the way around them. With that done, I'm going to kind of give it a chalkboard or washed look to it. So I'm taking Yeti ink and I'm just smoothing it over over uh, it. It works out better if you can take it in one swath all the way from top to bottom or bottom to top. If you can't, like I made it where it got a little funny in the center there, so I'm using just a damp um, baby cloth and lightly smoothing that out. With that done, I let that dry, by the way, and now I put it in uh, my stamp positioner, put on some anti-static powder, and have my uh, sentiment all uh, positioned. And I'm going to stamp that with Versamark ink. And I'm gonna stamp it a couple of times. I wanna make sure I get a really good impression. And you saw earlier how I kind of arranged those flowers in kind of a, 
a crescent shape and so they're going to go around this sentiment and that's why the sentiment's a little bit off to the right I always put two coats of the embossing powder. I find that that covers it better. And I make sure that there's no errant little pieces left before I heat emboss it. Kind of magical how that turns all white, isn't it? And so then I also cut, a using that notch die, a piece of foam. And I'm trimming off the edges there because I want to pop this up. And this is one of the easiest ways of doing that. And so see, it sits right on the inside there. So I'm going to take my behemoth double-sided tape dispenser, which I love to use because it has oodles of tape. And I'm mounting it right inside the white panel. And then I'm going to, um, I have put the the foam on the white panel and now I have just positioned it right onto the card base. So it's popped up from the foam behind the white and then I'm arranging these flowers and I have a little bit of foam tape on the back of a little square on the back of each of these flowers and I'm just kind of arranging them how they should go. So you can see that's that crescent shape that goes right around the sentiment. Is that done? I'm going to take the leaves that we did and I'm going to use um, this little micro dot adhesive um, dispenser because these this is uh, a repositional uh, adhesive. So it means I can reposition it and and if I once I leave it, then it will set to permanent, but it will give me a lot of wiggle room. With that done, I've got a, one more thing I want to do, and that is I'm going to add some splatters. So I'm just kind of taking some post-it notes, the little scraps I had around, and I'm just kind of blocking off what I don't want to have the ink to go on. Now, I love to walk, to add white splatters by using this Bleed Proof White ink. It's a uh, Dr. P.H. Martin ink, and it is so white, and it stays beautiful. And I just use a Starbucks um, stirrer there to flick on the ink. You, I want to be real careful with it. And I'm just going to add a little there. And so you can see, there it is. Um, it does take a little bit to dry, so please let it dry before you do this next step, which is I wanted to add a little sparkle to the center. So I don't know if you remember stickles or if you have used them, but they're a great glitter, just dimensional little accent, and I added those to the center. I don't know if you can see the detail there, but in real life, it's great. Now I'm going to quickly move on to the next card now that that one's done now that one went by really quickly this one will go even quicker so i'm stamping again some flowers onto nina white cardstock just like i did before using true um the true black and i need um, more flowers for this so i'm going to use some of the flowers i had before and um some flowers that i'm stamping here and uh, I'm just going to use one of those half blossoms, so uh, I will be um, fine with just stamping one of them. And now I'm going to position on the uh, dies, just like I did before. And I'm going to cut out all the flowers, and I'm going to cut out all the leaves, exactly like I did before. And I'm using the uh, new, uh, new leaf ink, just like before, and stamping just the simple veining. Now this is a little bit different colored um, green. It is a little more olive, uh, but you can use whatever colors that really suit you. And I'm just gonna cut, uh, just stamp all those um, veining. And then now I'm going to do the same treatment for these flowers. I'm gonna use the same colors, but I'm gonna add a color. So I'm gonna start out with R01 and flick on um, and kind of dab on in some areas too the um, this light pink onto each of these flowers and some of them I'm going to leave on the flowers fairly light and some of them I'm going to put more color in them because I want some variation in them so I'm using the three colors I'm using are R01, R20 and R22 for the darkest color 
and you'll see me add that on and you can see I'm coloring more of it so I have less white space there and that's what I want for some of these that are um, going to have a little bit more color you see it's I you know it's pretty it's really as easy as it looks there just flicking it on you don't have to be real exact it still looks great that's the one thing about uh, painting is that it seems like you have to be really meticulous but for something like this you can just dab it on and it'll just turn out wonderful so I'm just adding a little bit more of that saturation of color you see how those are uh, some of them are getting a little bit darker and some of some of them will stay lighter and the darker is coming from using that R22 and then I'll go back and smooth it out a little bit with the R20. I'm going to continue coloring these, just adding a little bit of color and more intensity to them. You can see I have the two darker ones there to my left that I've kind of finished. And now I'm just going to finish off these last two flowers, um, just kind of giving it a little bit more color and a little bit more blending. And then finally off to the last one, I just want to add just a little bit to it. I always have to fiddle a little bit, so I, I wanted to give just a few more touches. Now on to um, having a navy blue, card base these this is a long slender one with a matching panel exactly the same size so i'm going to put the uh, navy blue this is i uh, believe uh, blueberry sour is the color and i'm going to put um, some anti-static powder i have the sentiment already the same sentiment that i used in the other card and i have it already set up and i'm going to stamp it with versamark ink and I'm going to stamp it twice because, like I did before, I want to make sure I make, get a really good impression. And then we'll take that out and we will heat emboss it with white embossing powder. That second time, I really like to put two on there. It really makes a big difference on how much, how white it gets or how, you know, how, what good separate... A saturation of the color you get and then I take a tiny brush and just just flicking off any of those little bits of embossing powder or that are in places they shouldn't be and then I'm heat embossing it and it's like magic now you have this wonderful sentiment there and this one I have fairly centered except it's a little bit higher than center and then I put some double stick tape on the front or I'm sorry on the back and then applied it to the front of the card base now there's only a few more steps left and uh, so we're going to take these flowers and we're going to arrange it the way I you know I think would like it I do have um, squares of uh, foam tape on the back of each of these flowers like I usually do and I'm just putting them in position now this is a super easy card and I think it has high impact for how fast you can put this together because it just goes together in a snap. I'm going to take these leaves and with the same uh, micro dot adhesive dispenser I'm just adding a little bit there and I'm positioning these flowers and see you can see I didn't like that leaf where it was at and this is the beauty of this adhesive. You can easily move it because it gives you it is repositionable until uh, you let it set I'm going to put these all just get these all uh, arranged and then I'm going to take the simply white these are nouveau drops and I'm just going to make some dots with them this not only gives it a lot of dimension but it gives it some real pop with having that white kind of comes out and then i have that one little edge of the flower that was hanging out so i trimmed that off and then i'm taking the stickles like i did on the other card these are the black sparkle stickles and i'm just um, applying that in the center to give them a little more dimension and pop as well 
a little bit of the stickles got uh, away from me there so I just took a little exacto knife and edged it back it's easy to do if you do it real quickly so here it is all completed I think it gives a really big impact for a quick time and it certainly will make somebody's day that gets to receive a card like this and here is the close-up of the uh, one that we we the card that we did in the beginning and you can decide which one you like the best you can also change this card to be a little bit more subdued by just changing the background this one has a bold one and then finally this is a card that I did for paper tray ink ink to paper and I'll provide a link down below there is a full video on this one as well and this one you 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 cut out um, all the pieces of the flower and you can um, put them together in any color combination you would like and it gives a total different look so you can see how versatile this stamp set is I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you did enjoy it. And uh, if you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We would absolutely love that. And remember, as always, you can pop over to foilfox.com slash blog at, or, or click the link down below and you'll go and uh, there would be a complete supply list and um, more close-ups as well as oodles more inspiration. So that completes it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.